banking system collapse imminent? Major banks covertly impose withdrawal limits. CCP tightens grip. State media dictates five no's to financial sector. Public urges two sessions delegates address top 10 livelihood concerns. Massive explosion rocks residential building in Beijing on first day of CCP's two sessions. China's economic downturn spurs a new gold rush amid global uncertainty. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Banking system collapse imminent? Major banks covertly impose withdrawal limits. Following a revelation from a depositor at China Construction Bank, CCB, the practice of China's state-owned banks limiting withdrawals has sparked widespread debate in recent days. The Chinese Communist Party has a history of freezing bank deposits on a large scale at least four times, making it challenging for Chinese citizens to safeguard their finances. On March 1, a Weibo user expressed shock upon discovering that their frequently used China Construction Bank gold card had unexpectedly had its limit reduced, with efforts to resolve the issue at a bank branch proving futile. After lodging numerous complaints, a customer service manager provided a detailed explanation of the imposed limits, leaving the depositor astounded. The manager explained that, under directives from the People's Bank of China, the bank had introduced a model to evaluate transaction histories and set caps accordingly. For instance, if a card consistently recorded transactions in the thousands or tens of thousands of yuan, the system would automatically cap daily transactions at no more than 20,000 yuan, about $2,778. Further compounding the issue, customers looking to increase their limits must undergo a cumbersome process, submitting a plethora of documents, including property, social security, and provident fund details, with the possibility of raising limits only every three months. Even the manager disclosed a personal limit of 5,000 yuan, around $694, underscoring the policy's broad application. The news has ignited intense debate both within China and internationally. During the Chinese New Year festivities, customers encountered restrictions on transferring amounts over 50,000 yuan, approximately $6,944, through the China Construction Bank mobile app, despite attempts to transfer 100,000 yuan, about $13,888. Bank officials noted that being able to transfer 50,000 yuan in a single day was already notable, suggesting that to remove these restrictions, one must visit the branch where the account was initially opened. This restrictive practice appears to be a systemic issue across numerous banks, with instances of Agricultural Bank of China customers being limited to daily withdrawals of just 500 yuan, around $69.44, without any prior warning. This widespread limitation has left many unable to access their funds as needed. A blunt assessment from one user attributed these restrictions to a lack of funds within the banks, suggesting that these measures are in place to avert a banking crisis, hinting at a potential collapse of the financial system. Another user theorized that the real issue stems from the bankruptcy of local government bonds, with banks having to cover these losses, leading to the implementation of withdrawal caps. Amidst growing concerns, some have advised withdrawing funds from banks and converting them into Bitcoin as a precautionary measure, warning that failure to act swiftly could result in the loss of deposits. Beginning with the Evergrande debacle, China's real estate turmoil has progressively morphed into a banking crisis, posing a risk of overnight disappearance of bank deposits for the average citizen. Li Hengqing, an economist residing in the U.S., pointed out in a prior interview with the Epoch Times the vulnerability of China's banking system, noting it is merely one bank run away from disaster. Such a mass withdrawal scenario could precipitate a financial crisis. Facing this, the Chinese Communist Party, with its authoritarian grip, may opt to freeze deposits as a means of self-preservation, disregarding public welfare to secure its dominance. The immediate freezing of depositor assets by rural banks in Hunan acts as a stark prelude. 
Historically, the CCP has enforced bank deposit freezes on four significant occasions before 1978, in November 1950, following troop deployment to the Korean Peninsula, it implemented a one-month freeze on deposits from government entities, military, and organizations to curb the inflation triggered by panic purchases, in December 1960. Subsequent to the Great Leap Forward and faced with a fiscal shortfall nearing 17 billion and ensuing inflation, it issued additional currency and imposed deposit freezes, seizing substantial amounts alleging improper fund origins, the third instance in February 1968, amidst the Cultural Revolution's upheaval causing fiscal deficits, led to a nationwide freeze of about 7.9 billion in deposits, and the fourth in October 1976, when a decade of Cultural Revolution turmoil nearly bankrupted China's finances, resulting in another CCP-initiated deposit freeze. These occurrences underscore the CCP's pattern, in times of economic turmoil and threats to political stability, it restricts cash withdrawals and seizes private assets. CCP tightens grip, state media dictates five no's to financial sector. Amid an environment where the party controls everything, the Chinese Communist Party's control over the financial sector has noticeably intensified. At a financial seminar for high-level officials on January 16, CCP leader Xi Jinping articulated a vision for cultivating a financial culture with distinct Chinese characteristics. Following this, the People's Daily, the CCP's mouthpiece, released a sequence of articles reinforcing Xi's directives. These articles emphasize the need for the financial sector to operate within defined boundaries, focus on sustainable long-term growth over quick wins, remain reality-based, and pursue ethical profitability without reckless actions. Commenting on this development, Liang Xiaohua, previously a chief compliance officer at a mainland asset management company, highlighted that China's financial industry functions as a monopolized sector under CCP ownership, with the government essentially holding controlling stakes in major banks. He pointed out the push for ethical profitability, indicating a critique not of business practices but of the financial elite's high earnings. Meanwhile, Wang Guichen from Taiwan's Chunghua Institution for Economic Research interprets the crackdown as a response to recent financial instability, motivated by deeper goals of reinforcing party-dominated economic governance and fostering common prosperity. Wang explains that the measures aim to utilize bankers' assets due to state financial shortages and signal a shift in mainland China towards a transformation that doesn't align with Western democracy but towards a model of Chinese-style modernization with enhanced party oversight over businesses. Wang further critiques the CCP's ethical profitability mandate, noting the ambiguity in moral standards under Xi's autocracy, where even party members are uncertain about right and wrong, reflecting a deep alignment with Xi's leadership as the ultimate guide. In recent years, as China's economy has faltered and social unrest has grown, the CCP has aggressively intervened in various sectors including real estate, e-commerce, education, and entertainment in a bid to enforce absolute economic and societal control. This approach has led to ongoing disruptions across industries, a worsening economic outlook, and a pervasive sense of resignation among CCP officials at all levels. Wang Guichen states, the truth is, action becomes paralyzing when uncertainty reigns because Xi Jinping's word is final. My interpretation of right might be seen as a misunderstanding by Xi. This extreme caution leads to a growing tendency to either neglect duties, become apathetic, or too fearful to make a move, pushing people towards lying flat as a safe bet. Against this backdrop, Beijing's grip on the financial sector tightens further, pushing it away from market dynamics towards becoming a direct instrument of CCP control. Liang Xiaohua observes, bankers and financial sector employees are slowly regressing to pre-reform conditions. This backward shift offers no apparent benefits from the public's perspective, potentially leading to a contracting economy, a worsening market environment, and a widespread drop in incomes, hardly a positive outcome for the populace. Ironically, while state media proclaims that CCP's financial entities aim to serve the people, maintain honesty and trust, and avoid irresponsible actions, the reality is starkly different. The financial system, akin to other sectors under CCP control, prioritizes profiteering and stability maintenance over the genuine interests of the citizens.
In the midst of escalating financial turmoil within China's financial sector, countless depositors are left without any means to recover their investments, facing bleak circumstances. For instance, in April 2022, when rural banks in Hunan went under, over 400,000 depositors found themselves unable to access their funds. Their collective efforts to seek justice were brutally quashed, with some even facing cross-provincial pursuits. Public urges two sessions delegates, address top 10 livelihood concerns. As the CCP's two sessions get underway, even though it's widely recognized that the delegates serve as nothing but flower vases, mainland Chinese citizens are still appealing to them to propose authentic, sensible, and effective recommendations on behalf of the ordinary people, who are desperately seeking a way out, eager to overcome these challenges swiftly. A netizen recently compiled a list of the 10 most pressing public welfare issues that are capturing the attention of the populace across mainland China, which are listed as follows. 1. Clamp down on online lending. 2. Stabilize property prices. 3. Resolve educational challenges. 4. Prohibit online gaming. 5. Cancel property management fees. 6 address pension system issues. 7. Deal with the exorbitant costs of medical care. 8. Improve transportation infrastructure. 9. Remove parking charges. 10. Ensure food safety. The netizen talks in a video, every issue raised echoes the voices of the populace and highlights the problems they wish to see resolved. We're hopeful that the two sessions will take these matters seriously and work towards enhancing the quality of life for the public. Nonetheless, the consensus among many netizens is a resigned acknowledgement that the CCP is unlikely to tackle these public welfare concerns. Massive explosion rocks residential building in Beijing on first day of CCP's two sessions. On the opening day of this year's Beijing Two Sessions, March 4, a major explosion occurred in a ninth-floor apartment of Luleng Jiayuan Bailey in the Shangdi Street area of Hadian District. A video circulating online showed that the major explosion blew out doors and windows and cracked the exterior decorative layer. Nearby homes above and below were also severely damaged. Debris from the explosion scattered on the street, with an electric bike, presumably belonging to a delivery person, knocked over by falling bricks, but the whereabouts of the delivery person were unknown. A crowd gathered on the street to watch or take photos. The official Weibo account of the Hadian Fire Department confirmed the explosion, described as a gas deflagration and stated that three people suffered minor injuries and that the cause of the deflagration is under investigation. However, the authenticity of official CCP reports has always been questioned. Although the CCP officially reported the incident, it received little media coverage. On mainland social media, related videos and news have become difficult to find, with only a few videos circulating on overseas networks being preserved. On the same day, March 4, earthquakes ranging from 3.0 to 4.4 also struck Tibet, Xinjiang, and Gansu. China's economic downturn spurs a new gold rush amid global uncertainty. Amid China's current economic downturn, the Chinese people are flocking to buy gold since its value is more likely to remain stable over time, and even the Chinese regime increased its holdings by 30% last year. Gold prices have continued to rise since the end of last year given the increased demand. On March 1, the gold futures price in New York was $2,092.15 per ounce, up 1.82% from the previous trading day. On December 4 last year, the price of gold hit a historical high after 40 months, reaching $2,152. Analysts believe that the escalating confrontation with the United States has prompted the Chinese Communist Party to reduce its holdings of U.S. dollars and increase its holdings of gold as a backup plan. For the Chinese public, buying gold serves as a means of asset protection amid a downturn in real estate and the devaluation of the Chinese yuan. According to statistics released by the World Gold Council, WGC, on January 31, 
the net purchase of gold by central banks worldwide in 2023 was approximately 1,037 tons, the second highest since 1950, only surpassed by about 1,082 tons in 2022. The increase in gold holdings by Beijing was the most significant, with a net purchase of 225 tons last year, exceeding one-fifth of the total. Behind the gold buying frenzy China is the world's largest consumer of gold, with a long-standing culture of buying and saving up the precious metal. Last year, the price of gold in China saw strong momentum. During this year's Lunar New Year holiday period, a wave of gold-buying frenzy swept throughout China, with people flooding into gold and jewelry shops, leading to overcrowded stores and overwhelmed staff. During the eight-day Chinese New Year holiday, the sales volume for gold increased by as much as 70% compared to the same period last year. Mr. Frank Tianxia, a professor at the University of South Carolina Aiken, spoke about this gold frenzy, saying that this trend in China is due to the Chinese people's concerns about the future of the Chinese economy, the devaluation of the Chinese yuan, and the pressures of inflation. They are taking precautions against inflation and seeking to mitigate risks posed by potential disasters and wars. He explained, nowadays, the Chinese people lack confidence in the CCP's sovereign money, and there may be digital currency initiatives in the future, which are all very worrying. He continued, buying gold in troubled times is a tradition that has been passed down through the ages for the Chinese. Mr. Xie believes that the purchasing power of private citizens may be limited since they are taking money out from the stock market and savings to buy gold. Beijing, on the other hand, is buying gold because they know that they have printed too much money and that the Chinese yuan is losing its value. As China's real estate market, stock market, securities, funds, trusts, etc., are all in decline, gold serves as a hedge against economic downturns. Buying gold is a sign of pessimism about future economic growth and future inflation in China. Gold Price Predictions in the past 24 years since the millennium, the price of gold has only fallen in five years, while it has risen in the remaining 19 years. The most significant increases occurred in 2019 and 2020, with rises of 18.83% and 24.43%, respectively. There were slight declines in 2021 and 2022, followed by a 7.34% increase in 2023, with an average price of $1,932.14 per ounce. Due to factors such as dwindling gold reserves, rising labor costs, increased mining costs, and the long-term decline in U.S. interest rates, the price of gold is expected to continue to remain high in the future. Japan's Rakuten Securities Economic Research Institute pointed out that the decline in U.S. interest rates, which suppresses the rise in gold prices, makes it easier for funds to flow into the gold market, which has no interest. Some Japanese market analysts believe that if former U.S. President Donald Trump wins the election in November, his America First policy may further isolate China and may reduce military aid to Ukraine. Such policy changes may drive up the price of gold even further. In addition, the fiscal problems in the United States are worsening, with the federal government's public debt exceeding $33 trillion. For investors, the risk of downgrading U.S. credit ratings remains. The decline in the credibility of the U.S. dollar will prompt funds to flow into the gold market. Mr. Xie also said, the price of gold will slowly rise in the future. This is because worldwide demand is increasing, and the shadow of global conflict and war remains. If there is a sudden escalation in wars, it will lead to a rapid increase in the gold prices. Let us know your thoughts on today's topic by leaving a comment below. If you found this video helpful, please share it with a friend, it inspires us to continue creating more quality and reliable content. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more interesting insights from China Truths. Thanks for tuning in.